Hey guys, let's talk about some recent reads. So I've read six books in the month of April, which is fantastic for me. I'm pretty much a slow reader and it takes me a while to read. So I've read a few books or a majority of these books on Kindle Unlimited, which I've been really loving. There's some great selections on there, so I'm gonna talk about a lot of those in this video. The first book I read is Intercepts by TJ Payne. This is kind of like a sci-fi horror about this secret facility that essentially experiments on people. So in this facility, it's run by the government or some secret organization where they put humans in extreme sensory deprivation in order to get them to free their mind and see things, to gather information for them. It's kind of like what they did to Eleven in Stranger Things, but to the extreme. Dream. And the guy that runs this facility, he's like the head honcho, um, but he's not like the head honcho of the whole company. He's like the boss of the facility. His daughter begins experiencing strange events and he essentially learns that his work has followed him home into his home life and it's affecting his daughter and he has to learn a way to save her. This one was really intense at times and it was extremely violent and gruesome when they showed what was happening to these humans. It's really horrible to kind of read about what humans are doing to other humans for the sake of like this this greater purpose and it's just scary to imagine yourself as one of these humans being experimented on because the stuff that they go through is just unimaginable. So that I thought was really well told and well done. It felt very claustrophobic to read from their perspective because you do get a little bit of inside their head where their world is basically nothing and they just feel intense pain. It's really scary and it's also very trippy when the horror stuff kicks in. It's on Kindle Unlimited. I highly recommend it. It was really fun. Then I read an extreme horror novel called 100% Match. This is by Patrick C. Harrison III and this is a quick read. It's about this guy who is very disturbed and over the course of the story you learn just how disturbed he is and he essentially is looking for his perfect match in a woman. He thinks he knows all and he's also really disgusting and he works at a fast food restaurant and he does some stuff with bodily fluids and other fun things that he likes to add to people's foods so that was really disgusting to read and terrifying to think of if you ever go to a fast food restaurant that they're putting this stuff in your food. And he reveals little tidbits about himself so casually throughout the story and it's like really, really horrifying things that he's revealing casually and you're like, oh, so this guy is messed up. He may be a serial killer, who knows? And then he meets this woman and he thinks that she's his perfect match and you find out just how perfect she is for him. I thought this was a quick read. It was nothing special or crazy. A lot of the story is told for shock value. You don't really get to learn about these characters, but what saved it for me was the ending because I was like, yes, thank you. This is what I want. And I like what they did with the ending and it gets really gross. I I vlogged a little bit of my experience and it was just, it's one of those where your whole body is just, a f I get a full body reaction from reading extreme horror because the stuff that they say in these books is disgusting most of the time and unbelievable. So this was, I think, a good entry extreme horror because it's not too extreme. So if you're interested in checking it out, it's also on Kindle Unlimited. Then I read No One Rides for Free by Judith Sonnet and wow. This was one of the most disturbing books I've ever read and it deals with a lot of stuff that is not, it's not easy to deal with. So this is about a mother who is traveling across country with her two college dates kids and she's essentially bringing them back to college. They stop at a gas station and when she gets back in the car she realizes that this strange crazy man has gotten into the car and pulled a gun on them and he basically takes them hostage and they're like hey tell us where you want to go we'll take you wherever just please don't hurt us and he's like I don't have anywhere to go I just want to have some fun and he has a lot of fun and his his idea of fun is extremely disturbing some of the most disturbing, horrific things I've ever read. He forces these people to do things to each other and it's the kind of stuff that you cannot come back from 
mentally and it's just so horrifying I was so uncomfortable and just absolutely disgusted and you know that the stuff that these characters are being forced to do is just psychologically damaging that I just was like if I was put in this situation I think I would just ask to be killed because I don't think I could come back from that and it's just horrifying to read and think about the mother's perspective of herself and having to watch her children go through these horrific things it is just not for the faint of heart and halfway through the story before the really disturbing stuff kicks in they give you a warning to let you know that things are about to get worse and that you should walk away and I didn't walk away but it's it's so hard to read but I also could not put it down I think that Judith Sonnet does a really great job of making you feel for these characters and I like that the villain is just so heinous and deplorable like she didn't try to humanize him in any way he's just straight up evil and he's probably the worst villain I have ever read about ever and her afterward she explains that she wanted the story to feel uncomfortable she wanted to make you feel upset and it worked and she also describes how she didn't want to handle this story with kid gloves she wanted to present the trauma and abuse in the horrific way that it really is it's not something light and that has a happy ending sometimes it's just that horrific and I just thought the story was really well told I was super upset I still think about it and I do not think this is for the faint of heart so if you if you want to check that one out I suggest trigger warnings but yeah it's essentially a rape revenge horror story and it's very reminiscent of the last house on the left and the main villain is very reminiscent of the main villain in that movie he's deplorable he's awful story is it's just so horrifying then I read confessions by Kane Manato if I'm saying that right probably not I've been looking for this book everywhere I finally found it in Barnes & Noble I was so excited everybody has hyped this book up as having like some of the most shocking and insane twists even the bookseller at Barnes & Noble said that to me while she was checking me out and I was like yes I'm so excited to be messed up mentally and I guess I went into this super hyped and I was expecting more. The story is about a woman whose daughter was killed by her two students. She's a teacher and she tells them, she tells her class one day, look I know these two kids did it and I'm gonna get them back for it. She basically lays out the entire story in the first chapter to these students and then the rest of the story is told in alternating POVs from different students and characters that have been affected by this horrific tragic event. And I thought that was an interesting way for the story to unfold but I kind of felt like it became a little repetitive over the story because you're hearing the same story just from a different perspective. I think I was just expecting bigger shocking twists. The stuff that is revealed is shocking and I had to keep reminding myself that I was reading about children that are doing these horrific things. It's also another thing that I didn't like the way the format it's kind of told almost like diary entries and the diary entries are wicked long and I was like ugh. So you have to be in the mindset to read long ass chapters because I'm not a person who likes long chapters and that pissed me off right away. I was like ugh. And there's like hardly any dialogue so you're just reading pages and pages of text. So I don't know you just have to be in a good mood. You have to be one of those people that's like okay with that long, though that format. But yeah there's no likable characters in this story. I think that was an interesting thing is it's just presenting these horrible people doing these horrible things to each other and it's really it's disturbing and, and shocking. I just I don't know. I think because the hype for me was so high that I was just like eh you know. I liked it. It was good. I do recommend it. Then I read The Clown Hunt by Judith Sonnet. So after reading No One Writes for Free, I fell in love with Judith Sonnet. I was like, yes, I'm going to check out more of her stuff because there's just something about her writing that just pulls me in immediately. The Clown Hunt is essentially kind of riffing off of that whole thing that happened several years ago where there were clown sightings everywhere and we don't know what that was about. Do you remember that? When clowns were just appearing at schools, they were appearing like randomly, surprisingly, and there was no explanation and then they just stopped. So this is kind of set around that time. All these 
clowns are gathered up to be hunted and killed by this group of people who wants to put a stop to the madness because everybody hates clowns and that's the, the the basic premise the violence and gore in this is just it's unmatched it's insane it's two uh, and eleven and some of the scenes in this were so hard to read there is a cheese grater scene which is intense and it if you oh it made me squirm and it's basically what i wanted the evil dead rise cheese grater scene to be it's just it does not stop it does not shy away from the violence and it holds on the like if this was a movie it would hold on that scene and just let the entire violent gruesome moment play out and there's also a wishbone scene that is one of the most disturbing things i've ever read but another thing i want to add is that yes it's disturbing and it's sh shocking and this is what this book is about but also i feel like judith did a great job of making me care about the characters that are going through these horrific things it's just you you root for these people to get out of that situation and she did it so easily so quickly like this book is fast and i felt like I really knew the characters. So I do really like this one. I think it's one of her most popular novels. I think she rewrote it or republished it. Um, there's a whole afterword after where she explains that. And I think it's fun. I do want to read more from Judith Sonnet. And I want to read more about clowns. I love clown horror. It's a fun slasher. Is fun the right word? I don't know because it's really disturbing. It just makes you feel dirty and I like that feeling sometimes. And then I topped off the reading month with a book called The Catacombs by Jeremy Bates. This is also on Kindle Unlimited. I think all of these books are on Kindle Unlimited except Confessions, by the way. So The Catacombs is a part of this world's scariest stories, world's scariest places series from this author named Jeremy Bates. And this one in particular caught my eye because it reminded me of an episode of World Scariest Places, a TV show that used to be on in the 90s on like ABC Family or something, hosted by Linda Blair. And there was one particular segment about the Paris catacombs of this mysterious tape that was found of this person exploring the catacombs and then something happens and they drop the camera and then they run off into the darkness and this group of people goes into the catacombs trying to find out what happened. I've always been fascinated by that story because I think it's an urban lit myth, like I don't think that was real, but I like to believe it was real. So this story is based on that and it's about this group of explorers who go into the catacombs to try to find out what happened to this woman whose videotape they found and then they discover a whole crazy scenario underneath the city of Paris. I love the concept of this. I love the setup. The characters were so just awful. I hated them. Every single one of them. I did not care about them. I feel like the author did a lot to try to get you to care about the main character and give backstories about stuff that happened to them and I just did not care. I wanted straight up catacomb story and it was cool to get those moments in the catacombs where they're describing the scene and they're explaining the history of the catacombs. I thought that stuff was wicked cool and it gets very claustrophobic at times because they're crawling through small spaces and then it's very dark down there and then when the horror stuff kicks in it takes a little bit to actually kick in um it it was fun and sleazy and it reminded me of something from like the 90s or early 2000s um i don't think it's anything super fantastic i think it's just a fun sleazy ride and if you are like me and you're obsessed with the catacombs you'll enjoy it because it definitely gives those catacomb vibes and there you have it those are all the books i've read recently let me know what books you've read recently and if you read any of the books i talked about in today's video and thank you so much for watching guys i will catch you next time bye